Greetings YouTubers. It's the 2nd of April here and it's snowing. Um, had a busy weekend. Uh, robotics competition and uh, got home uh, Saturday night a little worn out. Took it easy Sunday. So what we did was uh, decided to clean up clean up my workspace a little bit and get this harmonic drive indexer finished. It kind of bugs me when when videos don't come to a conclusion. Um, so we're going to bring this to a conclusion. We're going to get it all finished up, all put back together. Going to show you as give you as much detail as as I was able to discern I had some questions about just you know the geometry of this thing and how it all goes back together and um, getting it adjusted so uh, we're gonna wrap that up because uh, I, I it's a nifty little project so we, we, we got it all back together uh, the um, I've been uh, suffering with a, a cold uh, cough, congestion, allergies, all kinds of stuff going on. <clears throat> you may have noticed that my, uh, just to let you know, that's what's going on if I sound a little funny. Um, I did in some of the previous videos. And I also am going to uh, add in a little bonus at the end of this uh, video, something that I picked up <clears throat> quite some time ago from a uh, very, um, um, I have to say gifted uh, machinist, uh, engineer, scientist type fellow by the name of Dan Gelbart. Uh, I believe he's uh, in the Vancouver area and uh, he does prototyping. He's a basically a, a you know, inventor machinist, prototype, you know, Renaissance guy. Anyway, um, I, I, all of his videos I find uh, very informative. And he's got one little uh, gadget, one little laser gadget um, that I decided to build um, just last week. I came across a, uh, a really cheap little laser thing at uh, Harbor Freight. So uh, we're going to toss that in there for you. And finally, just to give you an update, I am working on the um, Bridgeport. And uh, that uh, number two um, Bridgeport rebuild should be coming along shortly. And I am trying to not make it 57 episodes. Um, so I want to try to get it down to maybe um, one surface at a time. So the surface we're working on now is the bottom of the saddle and that will become the reference because that's going to be a single plane that will become a reference to print and scrape the top of the knee so we're working on the saddle we've we're pretty well along on uh, on, on getting that getting that scraped I don't know if I'm going to include the dovetails in that um, we'll do that later um, I may get all of the flat surfaces done first, which is what I'm thinking, and then go back and do the dovetail. So we'll yet to see. But um, I, I've got, I don't know, a, a lot of hours into it at this point, and I, I don't want to make the make the video longer than about 40 minutes, 40, 45 minutes. I want to take the take the saddle from uh, where it was. Um, but when it was cut on the um, on the planer, to you know basically a finished scrape on, on that surface, and do it in, in in one video. So that's coming along, and uh, whatever else we can think of in the meantime. Okay, so onward. Let's uh, let's put this wave, uh, this harmonic wave flex spline indexing gadget back together.
Let's see how this goes. Now, as if you haven't seen enough of this. I've been having all kinds of troubles with cameras today, so uh, I'll be happy to get through this. We're going to put this back together. As if you haven't seen enough of the harmonic drive. But this is less trivial than one might think in that to have zero backlash um, well, this one to have zero backlash um, the flexible spline has to be compressed on the opposite 180 degrees opposing sides so that it's fully engaged in the teeth of these uh, of these gears now we've taken some measurements to determine if the gears are different diameters since they're a different number of teeth and indeed they are not which kind of makes sense makes it you know machine everything to the same diameter of concentricity rather than having to machine tapers and everything to accommodate <coughs> changes in gears um, so yes they are the same size which means that the tooth pitch the actual um, dimension of the teeth must have a one percent difference between the two gears so that they indeed have the same diameter which is fine so we've measured this to be when when it is on a gear and fully compressed we've measured that to be uh, about one six three three and uh, <clears throat> you see I have a feeler gauge in here I've clamped this together with a feeler gauge just to ensure that it's the, the it's parallel there and uh, measure the ID and indeed it is cylindrical there's no taper to it which is fine I've done some previous reassembly testing and I have found that it doesn't seem to compress the same way on, on both sides for whatever reason I, I don't know but all of this stuff is seemingly machine symmetrical so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little I'm going to compress this to uh, with about a one thousandth clearance this measured about one three three I'm gonna try to get this down to about one three four which shouldn't take too much effort. There we go, 136. Get the other side. I'm sorry, 163. And change. There we go, 1365. I want to get right across that diameter there. And that's about 135. That's 134. Measure from the other side. That's a little snug. Can open that up. One, three, four, five. Okay, I'll go for that. It's one, three, four, five. <clears throat> so, theoretically, we should be able to slide this in here if we compress it. And it'll just fit. And we should be at or near our perfect dimension here. It slid right in. It's nice and snug. My 202 tooth gear. I don't. I'm not feeling any rocking or or slop in that side. But on the 202 side, I do feel a little bit of slop. And I don't know if that's avoidable or not. I can try tightening up on that side just a tiny bit. Didn't change anything. 
202 still moves. Little increments. I've done a lot of testing and playing around to get to this point. So I'm not totally working in the dark here. Yeah, see now this, now the 202 side, that's a little too snug, I think. And indeed, it probably will not turn very easily. I probably cannot get this ring to slide. But we're going to be in that vicinity. All right, so we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna grease this up now. Hmm. <clears throat> we're gonna grease it up. Just feeling for burrs. A little diamond stone. Just running it over. See if I feel any high spots. Or for that matter, see any. Because the diamond stone will put a little polish right on them. Yep, looks fine. Okay, time for a little grease. Recommended NGLI 2. We're using shell, aero shell. This is really sticky stuff. You see, it's got the uh, the military uh, markings on it, and uh, synthetic. 100% synth synthetic grease, and uh, I have I have taken to synthetic lubricants. I have found them to be highly stable, and uh, they do the job. And why not? A little grease in here. I don't think it requires a lot. Wow, yeah, that's, oh yeah, like, that slid right in nice. Ooh, what a difference. Okay. We're going to get the, some of the same in our teeth. Teeth of our gearing. i got to say, this stuff does not smell good. I'm trying to think of what it, I'm trying to think of what it smells like. Sort of a combination of. It smells like a dirty dog. That's what it smells like. We had a, we had neighbors. Once upon a time, that had a. I guess it, he was a great Pyrenees. Um, beautiful dog. Absolutely. Well, just wonderful animal. And he lived outside, and uh, he slobbered, and who knows what they get in their fur, but, uh, oh man, that dog, that dog reeked, that dog reeked. You just touch that dog in the head, you know, give him a little pat on the head, hello, how are you, All right? And you go in the house, and you go, oh my God, what's that smell, what, I they step in something? No, it was your hand. Anyway, that's what this stuff smells like. It's not pleasant. All right. Now the trick is to get it all to slide back together. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm getting this all back together. I've got new screws for holding it to its plate. 
And these are actually stainless steel. I've countersunk them a little deeper because my screws are a little shorter. And I am putting a little few drops of crazy glue between the 202 tooth, uh, 200 tooth uh, fixed gear and the end plate itself. And it has very high shear strength. But should I ever need to take this apart again, that shouldn't be a problem. I'm not totally relying on the on the shear strength of the 832 screws to hold it, although they will be considerable. Okay, so now that's all back together and assembled very nice and smooth, but it is not adjusted yet for uh, for anything, really. Let's uh, see if we can't get this puppy on its shaft. Little little grease on here, you know, it really doesn't need it. If nothing else, it'll prevent corrosion if I get some machining fluid on there. The best way to keep <clears throat> the best way to keep liquids out of a space is to fill them with something else. And I, I have this argument with amateur radio folks all the time about wrapping their coax connections with all kinds of various voodoo tape. And um, I, I keep telling them it's it's going to breathe. It, it you know it's 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 going to expansion and contraction is going to take its toll, and it's it's going to breathe whether you like it or not and what it what it breathes is going to contain moisture and when it cools it's going to condense and eventually you're going to get liquid and condensate and everything else in your connections and I don't care what kind of voodoo tape or goop you put on your coax fill those uh, fill those connectors with a good quality high dielectric grease and uh, and you don't have to worry about it. You just be done with it. Okay, so now I do not have my keyway in here. Just one for now. Now, if I loosen this set screw, I gotta put something in these two set screws, some sort of uh, filler, so that they don't get... I may be adjusting this a little more over the next, you know, however many times I, I screw with it. Um, but this, relatively speaking, this should be a pretty good setting here. And this is the lock screw side, so I'm going to unlock it. I guess I locked it up a little too much. I'm um, going to unlock it so it can be used. And now we see how it works. And there is a little, I do feel a little, a little uh, backlash. So let's see if we can't eliminate that. Because that's what it should be able to do, right? Zero backlash. Everything's put together tight. Yeah. Just enough for me to feel. That feels like zero. That really feels like zero. Can I still turn this? Not easily. Not easily. Okay, that's the high spot. That's the, that's the low spot. And I feel a little backlash on the low spot. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to partly dismantle this just a little bit. I want to make sure that my 200 and my 202 are evenly split, that I've actually got one tooth extra on both sides, that I don't have, you know, have it all to one side. So, And what I'm feeling is a little concentric wobble. So what, 
what I'm concerned about is that if if I have my 202 and 200 not split evenly what I might be feeling is a little bit of cyclo cycloidal type shift and that's where my slop is coming from so I'm gonna make sure that this is it's you know an extra tooth on one side an extra tooth on the other side between the two pinch points so that it's you know locked up on both sides because I think that that might be what's the problem we it's uh, going back together that kiwi it stuck out when I got it it's stuck out now that's about as perfect as I can get it I, I was correct um, I looked at the uh, 200 tooth gear and it did seem to have all of its all of its clearance on one side and I just loosened the ring tapped it over so that it was equally spaced with the flex spline and compression to have clearance on either side of that gear and um, put the 202 back in put it back together tight and there we are we're it's the operation is uh, it's not perfectly smooth there, there might be a couple of spots on that flex spline that, that will need to polish up over time with all the handling and there may be some minor damage to something also because this thing has seen some abuse but it's all nice and clean now there's no uh, there's no high spots in the teeth that I could find and uh, it certainly adjusts might loosen that up just a little bit more okay a final <clears throat> comment the uh, the whole assembly is back together there you go okay so there you go it's all back together and I've even got the, the uh, turntable back on it now so here's your uh, here's the bonus I promised oh and by the way I did put the uh, I did tighten the key on that adjuster and that little tiny bit of backlash went away so I may need to uh, put a little bit wider key in there so uh, here's your bonus okay here's a quick idea you'll like this is um, a little laser thingy a laser dot um, and it's uh, Harbor Freight five bucks all said and done uh, I machined it it projects a line it has a, a prism it comes with a uh, prismatic lens that projects a line and it's intended to be mounted on like a oh like a circular saw or cut off saw and uh, anyway, um, obviously I mounted it on the end of a on the end of a piece of three eighths rod to go into my indicator holder, and you spin it around, and it projects a little dot. You can find center on things, and uh, can't take much credit for this but uh, here's where it shines no pun intended five bucks if I broke it I wouldn't cry right um, okay so if I project it against the side yeah, let me get a little higher project it against the side and get it no, it's too high. A little lower. I want you to see the. There we go. When you get it. Well, it's, if it's off center, obviously it's going to be higher on one side and lower on the other. And if you get it level, all the way around. You're centered on that part. 
and it's pretty accurate. Now, I can't take credit for this idea on my own. I don't know where it actually originated, but where I saw it first was um, a fellow by the name of Dan Gelbart, G-E-L-B-A-R-T. I'll put a link down below. Um, very, very brilliant man. Um, he does a lot of proto prototype machining, got several patents under his belt. Um, shop guy, makes a lot of cool stuff. Um, and uh, you should check him out. He hasn't posted anything for a long time, so I don't, I don't know what's going on there. But uh, certainly worth looking at. Well, thank you for coming back for that final episode. And if you like this content, Please like, subscribe, comment, spread the word, and thanks for watching.